With a plethora of Bluetooth controllers on the market today, there is simply no shortage of ways to achieve console level gaming control on your mobile device. One of the newest members to the mix, the Razer Kishi, has been getting a lot of talk recently with the rollout of Microsoft xCloud. But does the Kishi make a big enough statement to give it an edge over its competition, or has it already fallen over? Let's find out for ourselves in my review of the Razer Kishi mobile controller. What's going on everyone and welcome to the maiden episode of The Keynote. I'm your host, the guy with the mic, j Mall. All right, let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this review of the Razer Kishi. So out of the box, you're greeted with very minimal packaging with a lift-based box design to give that premium feel. The package comes with one controller, one admittedly mnemic manual, and three stickers, which you can clearly see I've used one. Moving on to the actual controller itself, the front of the controller has reasonably sized real analog sticks with clickable action, function buttons, which will be used for start, select, menu, home, and back buttons, 8-way D-pad, which takes a nice rounded edge approach, a USB-C type connector that connects directly to the phone, speaker ports on the right side of the Kishi only to help direct sound, standard face buttons with a not so standard Xbox color scheme if you get the Android version, and a status indicator light, which tells you the controller has power. On the bottom is another USB Type-C connector, which is charging only. You cannot use a USB-C headphone or an interface cable for this port. Moving to the back, you have your typical left and right triggers and left and right bumpers, L2, R2, L1, and R1, two release latches to expand the controller, a retaining plate used to lock the controller, and stretchable support bands, which I assume doubles as an interface cable between both parts of the controller, so yeah, probably don't want to cut this. The controller weighs in at 5.6 ounces with a dimensions of 5.28 inches in length, 3.7 inches in width, and 1.46 inches in height when collapsed, of course. A couple of other things. There is no wireless capability at all on this controller. No Bluetooth, no 2.4 gigahertz, no Wi-Fi. Also, I would assume that because there is no battery on this controller, that that's one of the reasons why there is no rumble either. Granted, the added battery and rumble motor would add to the weight and possible size. And yeah, while I miss this, I'm honestly fine that they did not include this to keep the controller as compact and as light as possible. Lastly, the Kishi includes pre-installed removable rubber stops to hold the phone in place. Don't throw these away if you're not using them. I am not sure if replacements or third-party versions of these rubber stops actually exist. And you're going to need them depending on the size of your phone. More on that later. So I found using the Kishi actually pretty easy, though unlatching the retaining plate can take a little to get used to at first. Simply flip the controller over, then place your thumbs on the two latches, pull outward, then push inward under the retention plate, and then push upward away from the controller. Then the controller should come apart and you should be good to go. The controller has hidden tension springs on both sides, allowing it to expand and retract at set but fair distance to accommodate large phones. As such, this tension cannot be adjusted, so it will be interesting to see how those springs hold up over months of use. To set your phone, simply slide your phone into the USB side of the controller, then pull the other side of the controller over your phone. Simple. You should then see the indicator light turn blue and you should have immediate control. No drivers, no software installed. For some phones and setups, you may need more space to fit the controller. Thankfully, the inner rubber stops are removable. Personally, I use a OnePlus 7 Pro with a nice fabric back case in which I was able to fit the USB-C side into the controller, though I had a problem with the right side. It seemed like I could fit it tightly, but I didn't want to chance the side falling off because I didn't add enough pressure to it. So I simply removed both stoppers. To remove, each rubber stop is latched on. Just pull it forward with a little force and they should come out. Installing them back is just as easy. Just push them back in. Again, I recommend storing these somewhere just in case you get a phone later that may require them. The Kishi also has a companion app simply called Kishi that acts as a launcher, game discovery platform, and firmware updater. However, it's not at all necessary if all you're looking for is the controller functions. Putting it back together is also easy once you learn how the controller lines up. 
Thankfully, in the middle is a guide square that helps guide you back to its closed state. You'll know when you're in the right position if there is no resistance and the controller makes a satisfying audible snap. No excessive force necessary. Yeah. So, first impressions of the Razer Kishi, it's very light. I mean, it's like nothing here. And it's extremely small, very, very small and lightweight. Like in comparison to say, like this tape here and the Kishi, yeah, it's extremely small. It's also very plasticky. Like there's no metal components at all on this besides the USB-C connector or anything like that. Um, but even though it's not as substantial as like say a regular Xbox controller or a PS4 controller, I don't feel like I'm ever going to break this even on intensive play. It really feels very solid, very well built. So you don't have anything to really worry about. It doesn't feel like you're gonna break it at all, at any point. And of course, since the controller doesn't have rumble motors or an internal battery means that the weight is cut down significantly, meaning that your wrists and your hands are less likely to get tired quickly. Holding the Kishi for the first time felt really good actually, reminding me quickly of the Nintendo Switch or PSP, but you know, with uh, better sized buttons and joysticks. <clears throat> Slight jab, hashtag drift 2020. While the face buttons and analog sticks felt fine and responsive with no noticeable hardware delay in each press, the D-pad, triggers, and bumpers were fine, but a bit on the noisy side. The D-pad is also fine, but not going to win any awards either. It's responsive, but a bit mushy, but honestly, a tad better than the clicky D-pad on the Xbox One controller. So after extensive usage of the Kishi, what are my impressions? Well, after much extensive testing, my hands and wrists felt fine, very akin to using my choice controller, the Xbox One controller, compared to my old Bluetooth controller, the GameSir G4S, which is also modeled after the Xbox One controller, but with an included phone clip. With the Kishi, the weight distribution feels akin to a Nintendo Switch or PSP, where the GameSir and similar phone clip based control setups commonly put strain on your wrists, where the setup feels like it wants to tilt forward, rotating your wrists forward as well. Not very pleasing for long sessions. There are definitely smaller controllers with phone clips that come with a much better D-pad like the 8-bit Do N30 or SN30, but personally, I've grown away from flat back controllers since they tend to create tension pressure on my middle fingers, making holding them kind of tiring. Other controllers are around the same size as the Xbox or PS4 controller with or without a separate phone clip and some with worse ergonomics or quirks like super tiny sticks or oversized buttons making them a pain to play with at all. The Kishi does give a slight curve in the back, however it would be nice if they made them either slightly more indented or at least possibly adding a larger grip curve on the back to make them feel a bit closer to the Xbox controller. The analog sticks feel great, just like a standard controller. The triggers and bumpers work great as well with no grind or misfiring, but again, still on the noisy side. Granted, not extremely distracting even on longer play sessions. Even though the D-pad works fine for what it is, surprisingly, I did run into some squeak when using it aggressively, which was kind of odd. Not a huge turnoff, but something that does come up from time to time. Using the controller with a charge cable for the phone was also fine. I never felt that the cable got in the way while playing at all. My phone has stereo speakers, one on the top and one on the bottom, and though it would have been nice to have speaker ports on the left side of the controller as well, I was able to hear the stereo detail reasonably well, though this may be due to me removing the rubber stoppers. Speaking of which, a major downside of removing the stoppers is on the left side of the controller as it does give a slight wobble to the controller as a result. While the spring tension helps mitigate having the wobble excessively, I do notice the controller flex forward on my left side just for a bit when I'm really using it. A tad off-putting, I will admit, but not a deal breaker, as it's pretty subtle, depending again on the size of your phone and of course your play style. I think an improvement for a later design, possibly the Kishi 2, would be some twist lock pressure retention screws on the back of the controller to lock the phone in place when you're not using the rubber stoppers. 
But by far the best part of this controller is the in-game performance. I exhibited zero input delay thanks to the direct connected interface. This perk transfers over to streaming platforms like xCloud and Parsec where the controller response compared to Bluetooth feels very significant. For me, honestly, I do find this a bit odd though since within the phone itself, outside of game streaming services, both Bluetooth and direct connected controllers perform about the same. So I guess this could be due to typical Bluetooth weirdness or the specific implementation of Bluetooth to the phone itself. I don't know. I've already gone through more than 10 hours of gameplay with the Kishi through services like Parsec, xCloud, and even RetroArch. So in another video, I'm actually gonna take the Razer Kishi out on the field in many different conditions and test those services such as xCloud and Parsec to see how well it performs in varying different conditions. So definitely subscribe for that. So let's talk about the price of this controller. Currently, you can find the controller on Amazon and Best Buy for around $79.99 US. Given the state of the world, however, I have seen the controller fluctuate as high as $99.99 which can definitely be a bit off-putting. However, for some, the $80 price tag is a bit much for essentially a mobile-only controller. Remember, there's no wireless radio in this controller at all. However, when you consider the price of a standard Xbox One controller and the cost of a separate tiltable phone clip, the price is honestly about the same. It is definitely understandable that you wouldn't want to invest into a controller like the Kishi, which is specifically purpose-built for mobile phones, and since similar controllers already have Bluetooth capabilities and thus can be used on other systems or PC. However, you will be hard-pressed to find a controller with this much comfort, size, weight, and responsiveness. And to add, subtle good signs of a good product are additional accessories for it too. And yeah, this thing has a carrying case. Given the size of the analog sticks, I'm pretty sure there are stick caps floating around the net for it as well. So in conclusion, the Razer Kishi is a solidly built, responsive mobile controller that despite its shortcomings with the triggers, the D-pad, the slight wobble depending on your phone settings and if you're using the rubber stoppers or not, and the debatable price if you are sensitive to that kind of thing since this is not a wireless controller, is still one of the best mobile controllers that I've ever used. It's small enough to fit in the backpack. It has no battery, so you can keep it in a car so you don't have to worry about the battery getting damaged. And considering its form factor, the fact that it feels very PSP-like and very Nintendo Switch-like makes game streaming services a lot more approachable and a lot more portable. I'm not entirely sold on a rating system for these kind of videos yet, so if I had to give the Razer Kishi a rating, I would give it a solid 8.7 out of 10. Iterative improvements can improve the triggers and bumpers, a left controller underside tension screw to mitigate the slight wobble, possible underside rubber texture to bring out the premium a little bit more, along with slightly deeper underside curve for added comfort, left side speaker opening, and maybe next time a dual purpose undersides USB-C connector that allows for audio pass-through so we can use our USB-C headphones. There's a reason why this controller was rated one of the best at CES 2020. You will not be disappointed, I guarantee you, and I honestly cannot wait what Razer has in store for the Kishi 2. And that about wraps up our first ever episode of The Keynote. I hope you guys found this very insightful and helpful on your buying decision of the Razer Kishi. I'm still trying to put a couple things together with this, you know, whole intro and all that other crap is coming later, so definitely look out for that. Still brushing things up, but what did you guys like about it? What did you guys hate about it? If anything, just give me some information, some feedback, some critics, the uh, critics, cr critiques in the description below. And of course, y'all know how YouTube works. Do that funny thing with the bell icon and the thumb icon. And of course, share to your dog or your grandma or whoever you think really wants this video or needs this kind of information. And oh yeah, if you guys are into video game based stuff like video game music, I also have another channel called KJHD where I cover and remix a lot of video game based musics and do my originals as well. So you should totally check that out also in the description below. And I think we got everything, so see you on the next one. <laughs> Take care, everyone.